Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I wanna to show you how to do a basic install and setup of RetroArch on your Nvidia Shield Android TV. You might notice I'm at a desktop right now. That's because I needed to set up a flash drive or an external hard drive with some games. So I'm using a mini 128 gigabyte USB 3.0 drive. It is formatted NTFS. Inside of that flash drive, I have a folder called ROMs. And inside of the ROMs folder, I have four different systems set up. Atari 2600, Mega Drive, which was also the Genesis in the United States, NES, and SNES. Inside of each of these folders, I've added my ROMs. So for SNES, I have all my ROMs in here. They're all zipped up to save space. It's not going to matter too much. NES, same thing. Mega Drive, all zipped up. Now I can't show you exactly where to get these ROMs from, but if you do a quick Google search, you can find whatever you need. Now we're gonna be moving over to the Nvidia Shield. Just make sure your USB drive was formatted NTFS and you've added your games. Now you don't need to set it up exactly like I did, but I find it a lot easier to manage everything by having a folder with ROMs and then my games inside of separate categories. Let's move over to the Shield now and get this set up. All right, now that I'm at the NVIDIA Shield, we need to download RetroArch. I've also plugged in my USB stick to the Shield. We're gonna go to the Google Play Store. At the top, RetroArch. We're just gonna search for this. Go ahead and install it. All right, now that it's installed, we'll go back to the main menu and we can launch it from here. All right, so now that we have RetroArch started up, let's make sure our controller is working. It should automatically set up our Shield controller for us. So RetroArch does look a little complicated, but it doesn't have to be. As long as you follow along with my tutorial here, you should be up and running your favorite retro games in no time. Now, I don't use RetroArch for N64 or PS1 with the NVIDIA Shield. I use it for older stuff, SNES, NES, Atari, Mega Drive, things like that. First thing you might want to do is change the way this looks. We're going to scroll over to settings, scroll down to user interface, appearance. We're going to go all the way down to the bottom here. You can change the menu shader pipeline. So this is ribbon simplified. You can move over with your D-pad, go to ribbon, simple snow, snow, bokeh, snowflake, or off. I'm going to leave mine off. We can also change the color. You can change the icons also, but we'll need to download a pack. I'll show you how to do that in a second. There are a few really cool ones here, but they won't work right off the bat. As you can see, we don't have the pack downloaded. We can download it directly from within RetroArch, and I'll show you how to do that. We'll just go back, go to the main menu, online updater, update assets. It's going to download the assets.zip. And you need to be connected online for this to work. Now, if we go back to user interface, appearance, we can change this. Now I'm gonna leave mine stock monochrome. Now it's time to get into installing our games. First thing you wanna do is scroll over to settings. We're gonna to go to input, and we wanna make sure we have menu toggle gamepad combo set to whatever you'd like. I usually use L3 and R3. This will be pushing down on my analog sticks. This will bring me out of whatever game I'm playing back into the RetroArch front end. We'll back up. Now it's time to download a core. Since I have four different systems on my USB drive, I'm gonna download those four cores. I'm gonna to scroll to online updater. Core updater. First one I'm gonna download is the Atari 2600 because those are some of the games I wanna play. We're gonna download, it's gonna extract, self-install. Next I wanna scroll down and find my Genesis emulator. So cores are emulators within RetroArch. I use Pico Drive, this will cover Sega Master System, Mega Drive, Sega CD, 32X. I'm just gonna download this one. 
Next up, we had some Super Nintendo games. Now, I love SNES 9X. We're going to download this one. We also need an NES Core. Quick NES works great, or Nestopia UE. I'm just going to go with Quick NES. You can experiment with both. So now that we have our cores installed, it's time to scan for our games. We're going to scroll over, Scan Directory, Storage, and we're going to find our USB drive. It will be marked different than mine here, but it should be a long string of numbers and letters. ROMs, 2600, Mega Drive, NES, SNES. These are the games that I added to my USB drive. First thing we're going to do is scan the Atari 2600 folder. We're going to go into this folder, scan this directory. It's going to automatically scan for every ROM inside of there. We're going to back up. We're going to scan our Mega Drive folder. Scan this directory. Do the same thing with the next two. Now this could take a little bit of time depending on how many games you have in each folder. I added a bunch of games in each of these folders so it might take me a second to do this. Alright, so I finished scanning my four directories. We're going to back up. Now it did take a few minutes here but I had a lot of games. Back out of here. And as you can see, we have our Atari 2600 logo, our NES logo, our SNES, and our Sega Genesis logo with all of our games. We can start playing right now, but you might want to add some box art. Pretty simple to do with RetroArch. We're going to scroll back over to the main menu, Online Updater. We're going to scroll down to Thumbnail Updater. Now this does take a little while to download and extract, so I'm only going to do it for Atari 2600. Atari 2600. This is going to download the thumbnails for those games. It will match the games with the MD5 checksum and add the correct image to the correct game. You could also scroll down and just download your NES, SNES, and Sega Genesis also. Just going to back up. As you can see, when we scroll through here, we do have box art for most of the games. Some may be missing because the MD5 might not be there, or they didn't add the box art. Either way, I think it looks pretty good. So now it's time to start playing a game. We're going to move over to Genesis. I'm going to play one of my favorite games. Altered Beast. We're just going to press A and run. For this game, we're going to use the Pico Drive Core. After we choose it for this certain game, it will always use this core. Run. And it'll start the game for us. Rise from your grave. Now most of the time, the buttons are mapped very well for each of these systems, but you might need to remap them if you don't like the way it feels. You can do that. Remember we set up our menu toggle hotkey? Press in whatever buttons you set up as that. Mine are L3 and R3. We're going to scroll down to controls. From here, we can remap if we'd like to. Now most every emulator will have this option. You might run into some that don't. Just choose the button, press the corresponding key you want mapped, and that's it. I like the way it's set up from the factory, so I'm just going to back out of here and I'm going to continue playing the game. I missed my first power-up, though. We'll back out of here and try an SNES game real quick. Menu toggle hotkey. Close content. And we'll go with something from Super Nintendo. Just scrolling down here, I'm going to find a game I like. Joe and Mac. Press A. Run. Using the SNES 9X core. Run. Now we're playing SNES on our NVIDIA Shield Android TV. Now after you have all of this set up, 
you'll be able to set up pretty much any other emulator you'd like to. This was just kind of a basic install and how-to. I know a lot of people struggle with RetroArch on the shield, so I kind of wanted to make a video that would help out a little bit. Ah, I missed it. So one of the reasons I wanted to make this video right now was because I've been sick for the last five days. I've been laying on the couch and I've really neglected the Nvidia Shield for retro gaming. It's a great platform for playing your favorite retro games. And if we back out of here, it actually even does Dolphin, which is GameCube and Wii very well. N64 is almost flawless and a lot of the PSP games run at full speed, including God of War Chains of Olympus and Midnight Club Dub Edition. So for 200 bucks, I really think that the Nvidia Shield Android TV is worth it for retro gaming and video playback. I use Kodi, Netflix, Amazon on here, and I've used my 2015 version of the Shield pretty much every single day since I've got it. It's been a workhorse. It just sits there, it stays on, it does go to sleep every once in a while, but when you press the button, it comes right back on, you can start watching your favorite shows, or play your favorite retro games. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more great content. I'm also going to leave links to Amazon down below if you want to pick up a shield. Like always, thanks for watching. Real quick, I just wanted to remind you guys that I do have a Patreon, and if you're interested in helping the channel out, I really appreciate it. I also offer monthly Patreon giveaways, so go ahead and check it out. Links in the description.